Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are finally here. We have made it to October, the best month of the year for Creepy Sculpts. So, I decided to kick it off with another one of my Backflow incense burners and made this really cool, creepy pumpkin patch for my dining table over Halloween celebrations. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the video. First we need to build our armature, so you're going to need quite a lot of foil for this one. Um, if you're going to make pumpkins, you need to smush that foil down as much as possible, make it as compact as you can, um, just so that you don't run into issues with like bubbling clay later on. Um, so yeah, make sure you've got a good stock of foil, and literally just squish it until you've got a pumpkin shape, and ta-da, armature, problem solved. <laughs> it's a nice and easy one this time. <laughs> I keep measuring that small little piece of metal on the left hand side of the screen um, to the size of my pumpkin and that's because that's where my incense is going to sit so I kind of want to make sure that I create my pumpkin big enough to sort of house that bit of metal though I will go on to cut it down just to make it a little bit smaller and not have such a chunky head on top of my pumpkin um, but yeah literally all that bit of metal is is the bottom of a coke can um, that I used well, I used a pair of tin snips to cut it down and then these, uh, I don't know, fabric scissors? They're really good scissors um, to trim the metal down to the size that I want for my actual piece. When you are putting the hole in the metal, please don't do it the way that I'm doing it because this is really stupid and really dangerous. Now that I'm looking back on myself actually doing it, I kind of want to tell myself off. Maybe just uh, make the hole into your mat rather than your fingers. <laughs> um, and then I went on to make the stem um, of the Backflow Incense Burner using Milliput um, just because it's a better heat absorber than polymer clay. Um, I don't know if there are any other materials that you could potentially use. Maybe epoxy sculpt would also be a good alternative. I haven't actually used epoxy sculpt, but I've been told that it's pretty similar to milliput. Um, so if you've got that, you can use that as well. This is a really important part whilst you're making your backflow incense burner is that you make sure that, um, the smoke basically has an exit out of um, the stem and down into what will be the mouth of your pumpkin. Um, so you literally need to make sure that you try your best to align the holes up, but don't worry if they don't align so long as there is a gap between the metal and the polymer clay underneath it. Um, once you've got that, um, let it dry overnight and you'll have a really, really sturdy um, base for your incense to sit on top. Before you let your milliput set, make sure you do a test um, with some backflow incense, just to make sure that you definitely know that there is smoke coming out of the bottom. 
because if you don't do this test and you don't get the smoke coming out the bottom you kind of failed before you even started you need to be able to have a clear run through and it just saves time making another one it's been a long day <laughs> I was quite lucky and I found this lovely log in the range which is a shop here in the UK um, but you don't need to use like this exact log you could use anything that's got sort of like a bowl shape to it just something that's got an indent so that your smoke has somewhere to collect other than that you don't need to go spending a fortune on routers or anything else like that to try and get a log with a hole in the middle of it um, literally just find something that has a nice bowl shape that you can use <music> To create a nice rock texture, I'm literally just using a, another bit of tin foil that I have rolled up into a ball and letting that create like a, a rocky texture onto my polymer clay. This is Super Sculpey Original. Um, I've not got much of that left, so literally the, the, only the base is made out of the original. Um, and then I move on to using both Cos Clay and um, yeah, Super Sculpey Firm? Medium. Medium. <laughs> not firm. <laughs> um so yeah i've got a few different clays going on on this project but don't be intimidated literally the only two clays that i would recommend using is the sculpey medium and the cos clay you'll definitely need the cos clay if you want the well to get the tin foil ball out of your pumpkin at the end of it <laughs> If you're planning to make a piece like this um, and you're going to put roots in like I am right now um, I would suggest putting some armature in the roots if you're not going to use resin to make like a little lake in the bottom. The only reason I didn't armature my piece is because I knew full well that it was going to be sort of sturdy enough in the resin. So if you're not going to use resin make sure you put armature in sort of free floating pieces like this one. <laughs> To make the pumpkins, literally all I do is start off by putting like a thin sheet of my clay over the pumpkin tin foil shape. <laughs> Does that make sense? Made sense in my head. Either way, I added the polymer clay over the top and then I scored lines over my pumpkin to give me a rough guide of where I wanted like the pumpkin bulgy bits. <laughs> um, then sort of manually added each chunk of clay to each bulge this really doesn't sound <laughs> like a very good explanation <laughs> Thank you.
add my pumpkin to the base i'm literally just using a little bit of oven bake clay adhesive aka bacon bond and some cocktail sticks uh, i think i only show you one cocktail stick here but i did actually go on later to add a few more more bleh, more cocktail sticks just so it was definitely sturdy i didn't want it to be wobbling around <laughs> I made this pumpkin exactly the same way as I did the first pumpkin that you've just watched um, so I didn't feel like you needed to see that footage again um, and then I just spent a little bit of time playing around with different facial features and stuff like that you know make sure all your pumpkins have something different about them because if you've got all the same sort of generic face shapes and stuff like that it starts looking a little bit samey so you know spend a little bit of time carving pumpkins it's actually really quite fun we all love doing it over Halloween so why not do it with clay <laughs> This is our really important pumpkin, so I have moved over to using my cos clay, um, which will remain flexible once it has been baked. What I'm gonna do is I literally only make the first half of the pumpkin. Um, I cut a little hole in the top of the pumpkin so that I can rest the incense holder, although I'm holding it upside down in this footage. <laughs> um, so yeah, I literally sculpt just the first half of the pumpkin um, and then I'm going to bake that so that we just have half a pumpkin and then I should, in theory, be able to remove the foil ball out of it nice and easily. Um, in the footage you see that it does come out nice and easily. I kind of fibbed a little bit there and <laughs> spent ages off screen trying to lever the ball out without breaking the uh, clay figure. <laughs> Now we need to cut the clay completely away from the mouth so that the smoke has somewhere to exit the uh, pumpkin. So you literally want to cut right down to the fo foil ball. I can't say foil today, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you need to cut right down to the foil ball and remove the clay completely. So, you know, do some proper pumpkin carving. <laughs>
once I finished adding in all of my little pumpkin-y details, I wanted this one to have a more Skeleton Jack vibe without copying Skeleton Jack's face. Um, I then popped this half a pumpkin into the oven. <laughs> save some of the foil I'm literally just using some Tim's Tim it's not Tim's snips some tin snips to cut my foil ball down in half you don't have to do this if you want to create another back for your pumpkin just scrunch up some more foil and make a backing for it um, then I went on to paint the inside of my pumpkin black just so that I didn't have to try and figure out how to turn the inside of the pumpkin you know dark when I get to the painting stage I was trying to preempt something for a change um, then I'm using a little bit of black Fimo also to cover the what will be the inside of the pumpkin now at this stage you need to be really careful about where you're placing that foil ball make sure that you don't cover the hole for the incense burner and then do another test keep testing all the time make sure that the bat flow incense is actually able to get out I wanted to create some vines that sort of stick out of my pumpkins so I am literally just using some of my cosplay um, and a bit of armature wire and wrapping the wire in the clay and then I'm going to sort of just shove the wire into the pumpkins. Um, I'm using the cosplay because that will take a little bit of a knock if um, you know I whack it <laughs> and it will survive rather than the uh, super sculpey which would probably break so yeah use cosplay for anything that's sort of sticking out any twiddly little bits that you want to you know keep safe <laughs> I figured that the smoke needed like a small shelf just to sort of roll down and into the bottom of um, my wooden log thing. <laughs> um, so I did this using some pumpkin leaves and um, then I went on to do one final test and then braved the oven. Thankfully everything came out fine and you know in good working order so all that testing was certainly worthwhile. <laughs> As you can probably tell from the chaotic mess behind um, the sculpture, I am using Arteza paints um, for the sculpture, which is generally what I use all the time. I gave it a base coat in black first, just because it saves an awful lot of time in trying to add loads and loads of black washes later on, although I do still use some black washes because you have to. Um, I then went on to sort of prime the highlighted areas in white before I went over in like some shades of blue. Um, I took this inspiration from the front cover of Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I noticed that they don't really use too many colours in any of their sceneries and I kind of like that. Gaves it, Gaves? 
it gave it my goodness i can't talk today um <laughs> it gave it a nice dark halloweeny vibe <laughs> to that nice dark Halloween theme going on um, I made sure that I kept most of my colors like mute um, so I use like dark olive greens and um, burnt umbers and stuff like that just to highlight the leaves but I didn't want them to be like bright bright green um, I then after I finished painting them went in on everything in a dark wash just to get back into all those nooks and crannies with some darker colors just to bring down the vibrancies of the blues literally the only bright color that i think i use is the orange for the pumpkins <laughs> going to give my pumpkins like a slime pool to be sitting on because well why not so i'm pulling out my resin i will leave a link in the description below to the resin that i use because i can't pronounce it <laughs> um also if you're going to be cheating like i am because i couldn't find any cups to actually mix my resin in i'm using the bottom of a fizzy pop bottle <laughs> when you're stirring make sure you get into like all those nooks and crannies of the bottle as well because you really need to make sure that you're me mezzin oh my god your resin i'm so sorry guys that your resin is well mixed <laughs> um i then went on to add a little bit well actually a lot of bit of um uv pigment and a little bit of green mica mica powder however that's pronounced um gave that a stir in just to give it kind of like that oozy green slime feeling <laughs> Once I had finished pouring my resin, I literally just let it set in a well ventilated place for 24 hours and that was my sculpture done. <laughs> Uh, 
That's it, guys. My pumpkin patch backflow incense burner is finished. I love making an incense burner. I genuinely feel like the incense gives my sculptures like a an extra little bit of life. It has a purpose, and so I really enjoy making them. So uh, I'm sorry if you're bored watching the <laughs> incense burner videos, but I really enjoy making them. And for Halloween, the smoke is like one of the things that just works doesn't it so you know thank you very much for still being here at the end of the video you guys are legends and you know do take a minute to like definitely share for me that would be wonderful and if you're new here then please do take a minute to subscribe because i love new subscribers <laughs> um so that's it guys i guess i will see you in the next one bye